Hey, what is up everyone? It's Rich. All right, welcome to the next installment in this uh, little Clip Studio series um, that I'm doing for all of you. Thought it would be exciting. I know that there's a lot of people that really don't have the opportunity to ink traditionally for a multitude of reasons. And Clip Studio is a great alternative. If you can't afford all the inking tools and stuff like that, you can do a one and done. It's easy to send files back and forth, but let's get right into this. All right, so what I wanted to talk about today is um, the marquee tool and um, using pre-made ellipses. It's a, it's actually very tricky at first and it'll, it'll drive you nuts if you don't know how to do it. I would consider it basically an, an intermediate type skill in Clip Studio. But first things first, there was one thing that I neglected to mention that I think is important from yesterday's video, which is I have my blue pencil layer that I created, which was, um, again, in the beginning of the video that I did yesterday. Um, and then I created a layer that I'm going to ink on. But I would recommend you want to go over here to where it says Bacalo Blue that I created. I'm going to right click this, which I'm just clicking the, um, the whatever, the thing on my um, stylus. I'm going to go down to Layer Properties, which is Layer Settings. I'm going to lock this layer. Now, the reason I lock the blue pencil layer is not so much that I would get confused now, but after three or four hours of inking or five or six hours of inking or 10 hours of inking, and you've got a few layers going, it is really possible to either accidentally select the blue line layer or even hit a button that will drop it down. And all of a sudden you're working on a layer that you don't realize that you are. And if you ink right on top of the blue line layer, unfortunately, it's a little trickier to remove the blue line, but at the end of the process, when I ink on its own layer, this is the inks, I can remove them. They're on, they're, the inks are on a couple of layers right now. Um, but, um, you know, my inks are there and the blue line's gone. It's a really, really simple thing and to lock the layer isn't a big deal. So again, what I did is I went into layer settings um, you'll get this like sort of um, pop out window and then you want to lock the layer. So, all right, now what we're going to look at today is we're going to look at the marquee tool. I did a quick test just to make sure that I remembered how to do it. This is a little thinner than I would use, but you see this little area right here. I'm going to show you how to do this and kind of work with this tool because it is actually tricky. So the shortcut key to open it is U. U pulls up this menu on the side which is pre-made shapes that you can use, but also you can transform, which means that you can flexibly move them into the exact shape that you want. But it's a little tricky and there's some weird things that go on with it. So when I do my panel borders, if I'm in a 600 DPI file, I believe that my panel borders, that most of my panel borders that I would do, I'm gonna create its own layer for panel borders, which is a good idea. I would recommend if you're gonna do, if you're gonna ink sequential pages or even draw sequential, um, I'll call panel border inks. And how I did that was I clicked on raster layer right here, new raster layer, and, and, and that created the layer. And then I just double click this and I wrote panel border inks. Um, so um, if this was a panel border, I'll make it just small. Um, 12 will give you a size about like this. And what I did is, let me go back really quick and show you this. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm clicking R and I'm going to tap right here and it's going to straighten out my page. What had happened is R will rotate your page. So when you're working, if you press R, you can then grab it in the corners or even in the middle and kind of rotate it. It doesn't rotate as good in the middle. Um, and then when you want to get your page perfectly straight again, just tap over in a corner or over to the side twice and it'll straighten it out. So now let me go back. I'm going to go U and I'm selecting the rectangle tool. I'm going to take it up to 25 and I'm just going to create like a, a fake panel border here. So I pull it out and then I tap. And once I tap, it lets go. So I'm going to do it one more time. So I, I set it down. So I'm touching the screen. I pull to exactly where I want the panel border and then I let go and, and it will stop right there. You don't necessarily have to tap with this tool. Right, let me see if you do or not. No, just let go. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the ellipse tool because the ellipse tool is what's gonna help us make these. And the ellipse tool is a little weird when you start using it. So when you start with the ellipse tool, I'm gonna show you a few things. First of all, if you just tap the screen and then pull, you start to get a shape. Now I have the size set on the ellipse uh, different, but it, it made actually a decent circle. There's a trick to actually getting a perfect circle, but I did that on my own. You'll understand what I mean in one second with this. So I'm gonna go Control Z, 
and remove it really quick or do i need to tap oh it was still it was still live you have to tap the screen with the ellipse to to set it down we'll say so i'll do that one more time i'm gonna make it a little bigger so you can see it so i've got it on 25 i'm gonna tap the screen with the ellipse tool over here selected and i pull it out but now if i i'm holding my stylus to the screen I can manipulate this into any angle that I want, okay? If I need an ellipse at an angle like this, because it's going to be setting on a ground plane, I can do that. If I need it on a wall where there's ellipses coming towards me, I can put them in perspective. But when I lift it, do you see this? Now I can rotate it, so I can actually put it at any angle that I want. And then if I tap the screen, it deactivates it. But this is very, very tricky. It takes a while to get used to this. So let me show you one more time. I take the ellipse tool, I tap the screen, and I pull out. Okay? And I can, as long as I hold my stylus down, I can do this, and I can do this. The moment I let go, now I can rotate it. But do not touch the screen. But do you see this? Now I can do this. So give that a shot first, and just see if you can get used to that me mechanic or that skill. So tap pull out I'm still holding it down when I let go now I can rotate so that's the first step of it then I tap the screen and now it's become stable the trick is though is lining it up onto something that you want to place it on but I'm going to show you one more trick to get a perfect circle which is not a huge secret but um you hold down the shift key tap the screen with the lips and pull out and that will always give you a perfect circle now, if I let go of shift, now I can have it loose again. But if I put it back into shift, and I, I never let go of the screen with the stylus hand, only with the shift button. So I can, holding shift, it will go back to a perfect circle. I let go of shift, it does this. And then when I left, lift my stylus off the screen, I can rotate it. And then I tap, and it's done. Okay, so now, say I want to ink these things right here. It's kind of a pain in the ass, to be quite honest. But but this is what you want to do. I sometimes recommend if I'm doing a series of ellipses, I will a lot of times create my own layer for it. So I'll just call this like ellipse one or like tech. We'll just call it tech lower. Um, okay, so now I'm on that layer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a, a thickness. I'm going to go for 17. That one was too thin, my little practice that I did before. So I'm going to tap the screen. I'm not holding the shift key right now. And I'm going to try to get this as lined up as possible. So I pull it like right about to here and then I'm rotating it. So I lift it and then I set it down. It's not really exactly where I want it though. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lasso tool, which is L or no M. M is marquee. Marquee will open the lasso tool. So the lasso tool is selected here. I have the one that's round and not the polyline. And I'm going to go like this and I can scoot this over. So I'm going to go control T. And then I'm just going to move it right here. So it's close now, but that's not the exact shape. It's a little thicker than I would normally have it. But if I if I get rid of this and you look, his has got like, a, there's a little bit of something going on. This other one was kind of flat. So what I can do is I can actually take the lasso. I'm still selected with the lasso. I'm going to grab this half of it and I'm actually going to flatten it out. So this is the area that I want to activate. I'm going to go control shift T. Now I've got it in a transform tool that is malleable. I'm, I'll, I'll be ridiculous with it for a second so you can see what it does. I can start to manipulate this shape to anything that I want. And it's it's this is almost what they call free transform, which means that I can pull it and push it any direction. So if I want this kind of flat on this end i can kind of do that but i have to lengthen it too let me zoom in a little bit so you can see what's going on i'm gonna so it's not perfect but then i can go to my pen tool so i'm going to press p and i've now i've got the mapping pen selected and i'm gonna take my black pen and i'm gonna sort of fix this a little bit so i'm gonna go in and kind of draw the shape a little and i'm gonna use I'm going to press C, and that creates an eraser type tool. It removes pixels. And I'm going to clean up this edge right here just a little bit. Now, the one thing you have to understand is because of the zoom function in Clip Studio, you can get psychotic 
in terms of pi pixel perfect sort of things. The human eye at the level that this is going to print is going to see it at about this. Like this is about comic book size. So don't drive yourself crazy trying to move literally like one or two pixels. Always zoom out and see what you've got going on from a distance. Because you don't, it's so easy to be like, ah, oh, shit. There's a little line right there. I need to get rid of it. So I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm gonna remove the pixel. Oh, it's on another layer. I, I think it's on this layer. This, this, this layer. This layer. So I go C with my pen tool. Okay, no, C again. C, C will like when the mapping pen is a drawing pen. So normally the mapping pen will make pretty lines like this, very like thin to thick. It's a great, great tool. I love it. It's my favorite thing to ink with. But if I press C, it becomes a pixel remover. And any of the tools do that. It's a really, really cool tip that um, uh, two people select uh, recommend or um, told me about. Black Math and Balandor uh, mentioned it in the comments section. But anyway, so so now I need to put the next ellipse here, and then we're gonna wrap this video up. The thing with this is, I sometimes would personally recommend that you actually do it on another layer and then flatten it. And I'll explain why. So if I go back to the ellipse tool, which is you you so i press the wrong button and i'm gonna have this one a little thinner i'm gonna make this 12. i want this a little bit thinner so if i go in now on the layer that i did my original one and i get this off oops i've got a weird color selected or oh it's on c that's why i was cutting pixels you have to whenever you go into c mode which is the remove pixels you have to press it again to get back to the like drawing tool so if i do this now and i get this in the problem is i can't really edit this easily I'm gonna make it a little thinner too. I don't like it that thick. Um, so if I'm if I'm putting this in and I rotate it a little bit and it's just not lining up, if I if I now select it, I mean I can do this. I mean you can take the the lasso tool, which is M, and then I can grab this and I can start to scoot this around. I'm gonna go Control Shift T, which is like a free transform, and I can kind of I can sort of manipulate this, but it it can get tricky. So if if you find yourself where you didn't lay something down exactly where you wanted it and it was looking funky. Um, now I'm gonna take my pen tool, P, which takes me back to mapping pen. I'm just gonna blacken in this little area here. And then um, I'm gonna put a different shadow than Chris has here. I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna go GG, which is the paint bucket tool. And I'm gonna drop that in. It gives a little, there, there's a little bit, you can see a little bit of like, sort of like line there. It will never show up. Generally at the end, what I do is I kick my page into Photoshop um, and then um, just take the dodge tool, dodge and burn, and I'll burn these completely black um, so that it things. But but there you go. And you've got a really nice, clean, I mean, it's not matching up exactly. I can make it match exactly. So that wasn't really the point of the demo. Um, but uh, because I wanted to show you the transform. So I was showing you what it can do. But yeah, you can kind of massage things with that. But, but um, normal transform really quickly. Let me grab the ellipse tool one more time. Normal transform is just control T. So I've got the cut pixels selected. Uh, B. Uh, what is going on? Uh-oh. That's my, I think my computer froze. Let's see what's going on here. What is going on? Uh, C. Oh, okay, there we go. I think it was on C. I think it was on cut pixels. So that was why I was doing it. Um, if I use the ellipse tool, I'm gonna make it big so you can see it. So like this, um, and uh, I want to just transform it like regular. Just Control T, Control T. Now, do you see it selects everything though that I drew on this layer? So that's where it gets problematic. Is if I want to move this circle. Or, or ellipse will say it grabs everything so you have to use the last sew tool and grab what you want so i'm pressing m and then i'm doing this but if i go control t only control t not control shift t it will only do this it resizes it exactly the shape that i had it now if i want to manipulate it like say i need part of it flatter I would still put the lasso around it, go control shift T, and then now I can move it more flexibly. You see what I'm saying is I can I can make it in an intro, more interesting shape if I needed it in perspective, 
you know, I can, I can make it look like it's laying on a floor. You see that? You have to kind of know perspective, though, to do this. There are perspective tools. I'll get into that later because um, the perspective tools are pretty badass. And I don't do it, I think, the way that most comic book artists do it. But you can make some really beautiful stuff in Clip Studio. So I want you guys to get excited about it. If you have it, you can start using these techniques if you haven't used them. If you have any questions, let me know and I can try to clarify. I'm, you know, it's... it's um. I'm not currently using Clip Studio myself. I haven't used it in probably seven months. So um, uh, my computer, I pressed enter, so it's trying to think to lay that down. But um, yeah, I haven't used it in a little while. And and um, even, even then, I, I only really used it for about a year. But I did ink a lot of Crystal Planet with um, Clip Studio because of the, the um, speed of it. Oh, and uh, I'll show the, the splatter brushes later. I, was, I did a some tests of um some techniques so anyway get excited and uh, have fun with this i'll talk to you guys later bye